Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, back with some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. It's been a while. Uh, if you have a look at these files compared to when I'm recording this, yeah, yeah, it's been quite some time. It's like August 2nd now, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're starting Recipe for Turnabout, which is case 3 of game 3. This is probably the weakest part of the game, but it's such a good game that it's probably worthwhile still. Um... I should warn up front, one of the witnesses in this case, he's like eh, an effeminate Frenchman and people in the courtroom aren't sure whether to call him a man or not. It's... it's kind of gross. Um, I haven't played the case in a while, so it might be worse than I'm remembering, but we'll see. Let's go. That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. It, it wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. The evidence and testimony we have seen and heard are conclusive. The victim was alone at his table when he drank from that poisoned cup of coffee. No, you're wrong. I know what I saw. I saw. I saw. I saw someone else there. A man. He's the real killer. anyone believe me? Well, I'd say that pretty much wraps this case up, wouldn't you? Mr. Wright? This court finds the defendant. Guilty. That's right. We haven't pressed any buttons yet and we've already lost. This court is adjourned. Game over. Shortest case of all time. <laughs> no, not really. January 6th, 10.03 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Ah, the start of the new year always makes, me, always makes me feel like I can take on the whole world. I bet it does, Maya. So, I've decided that our resolution should be... Zvari, take on the world. What do you think? Sure, whatever, Maya, but I think maybe you've had more than enough mistletoe cake. What is mistletoe cake? Is that a thing? Never. You've got to eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching the fireworks on TV or playing a board game. Hey, pal. Detective Gumshoe? Happy New Year, Detective. Uh, likewise. Now listen up, right? I wanna... Here's to another fruitful year of Lawyer Police Corporation. No, Maya. ACAP. Um... Yeah, me too. All right, pal. You've got some explaining to. Have you got a holiday present for me, detective? A what? Well, uh, um, here, have this. It's really nothing much, but... Yay, thanks! <laughs> Look, pal, we need to have a talk. Take a seat. Hey, what about Pearly? You haven't forgotten her present, have you? Uh, n no, I mean, yes, I mean, no. Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> Guess I'm busted. How did you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. Now let's see how funny you think it is when I show you this. What is it? A magazine? Hey, I want to see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney Wright trounced. T trounced? Let me see that. The defense attorney gave an almost childish childishly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for the ruling in this case. Well, and don't we tell me you don't remember anything about it. But I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> when was that issue from, anyway? Um, December of last year, which I guess makes it last month. Which makes it old news, you mean. But I wasn't involved in a poisoning case in December. Hmm, so what do you think this is all about, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way. You don't mean... A pho A phony, Nick? This must be, must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. 
Guess he's starting off the year with one too. Magazine clipping out into the court record. So, what are you gonna do about it, pal? What do you mean, what am I gonna do about it? Well, it's your fault that the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. My fault? How do you figure that? Because the Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. Yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full of yourselves? But I didn't do anything wrong. At least, not that I can remember. You better make this right, pal. Now. And that means taking the case back to court, got it? Sounds like we've got our first case of the new year. Let's tackle it with gusto. I don't know. The judge already issued a guilty verdict once in this case. It's not going to be easy to get it overturned. I guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So you're taking the case, right? Good. I'm going to head off to over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll go back to the precinct. Drop by if you need something, okay, pal? I guess people are starting to know the name, Phoenix Riot. If a client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation, I guess I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of a guy would do that? So yeah, we weren't actually the one doing that case, it was, it was someone who looks a lot like Phoenix. <laughs> January 6th, Detention Centre, Visitor's Room. This is so nerve-wracking, waiting to meet our new client. I wonder just what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. C keep it down, Maya. That kind of talk would ruin me. Ah! How could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? They put me in solitary. I haven't been able to stop crying. Oh god, she was in solitary? That's horrible. Uh, aren't you... Yes, I am. I am totally and utterly let down. Ah, you're... are you... Don't pretend you don't know me. It's me, Maggie, remember? Maggie Bird. Maggie Bird. Ah. Maggie Bird. She's the policewoman I defended that one time. She was accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop too. She's not a cop anymore. She's a good girl now. What are you doing in here? Didn't I get you a quit? Oh sure, very funny. After that fifth rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. Uh, oh, I see. So that's where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. I vaguely remember her saying the exact same thing last time. But I don't mind. What's one more disaster in my life? At least now the real Mr. Wright is here with me. I wouldn't let the world keep me down, sir. So, how come you're dressed like that, Maggie? Last year you looked so sharp in that police uniform. Hmm. I was fired after that incident, after that incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind one bit. I enjoyed being on the force, but I think it was time for me to move on. So, what do you do now? In the second act of The Life of Maggie Bird, I'm playing the role of a waitress. A waitress? Yes, in a French restaurant. It's a small place, but it's quite fashionable. My charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me straight away, sir. And then you got into this mess straight away, right? Yeah, you could put it that way. This whole mess started on the 3rd of last month, and it happened at Trey Beyond. Trey Beyond? Yes, it's a restaurant where good service and a friendly smile are always included. Oh. There were two men at the table, both drinking coffee, and then... One of the men slipped some poison into the victim's cup. The victim took just one sip and was gasping for air. Oh, I was so shocked I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? You keep calling the guy the victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all. I'd never even seen the guy before. 
Oh. So she wouldn't have had a motive to kill him then, I guess. And the other man, the killer. You saw him, right? Of course, a good waitress must be attentive to the clientele. So, you saw the killer, but you were found guilty of the crime anyway? How come? You tell me, Mr. Wright. Ack. Guess the answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. Better see if I can get a description of the guy. So, if you saw the murderer, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. Saw what? The other man. The one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, the customer, everyone. The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. But how's that possible? I don't know, but nobody, not one person would believe me, sir. Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. What a pathetic defense. My granny could have done a better job. Look, that wasn't me, okay? And then, they found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. What? A small bottle of poison. What? But poison? It was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. The killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. And no one else saw this other guy. This... this other guy. <laughs> it's in red, I don't know how to pronounce red. <laughs> no, sir. That's what everyone said, but I don't see how they could have missed him. I was the one who took the coffee to the two men. Uh, oh? And what was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I kind of thought they might be in the music industry. In music? How come? Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece and an emo musician's look about him. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. An earpiece and a sample CD, huh? Did you get a look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. I think it was MC something? They, even, they must have been preparing for their debut, I guess. So it was a band CD. Maybe a promo disc? Maybe it was MC Screwdriver. Get serious, Maya. Would you buy the CD of a group named that? <sighs> what was the name of that group again? MC Hacksaw? No. MC... And um, what about the killer? What did he look like? Well, I, um... I don't really remember. Only that he was a young man. Well built like the victim, really. Hmm. January 6th, police station. Criminal affairs dept. It's been ages since we came down to the precinct, huh, Nick? Looks like Gumshoe isn't around. He's got it so easy, leaving everyone else to do the work. No, he's out there somewhere. My bed is on the courthouse. He's probably trying to arrange the retrial of this case. Guess that means we should go to the detention center and chat with our killer, huh? After being convicted without a fair trial, I'm not sure killer is the right label. I think we need to show her the badge? That badge, is it real? Of course it's real. That's what they all say, but I've been duped before. Give it to me for a sec. Ah. She... she bit into it. And I left a few teeth marks, too. I can see that. I just wish I could remember if that means it's real or a fake. <sighs> I said it was real. Uh... Maybe I show her the article? I... Oh yeah, I need to ask you about this. I need to ask you about this. Hey, this article's about my case. Can you tell me anything about the guy who was pretending to be me? Yes, sir. It was the morning after I'd been arrested. I met you in the visitor's room here. You were wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Ugh. Hey, Maggie, was my evil du double I am here? <laughs> I am here too? No, I don't remember a phony you, Maya. Oh. <sighs> Would have been so cool. Then you got really worked up and passionate. I'm gonna get you get you, I'm gonna get you clear to this crime, you said. 
Okay, I get the picture, but you've met me in person before. So how come you didn't realize that guy wasn't the real me? I guess looking back now, it was a little strange. Only a little? Well, okay, so you were a bit taller than normal, and you looked a bit shady, and your voice was a bit weird. Oh, and you had this kind of funny accent, and so the guy was nothing like me then. But he had your spiky hair and blue suit. Is that all it takes for someone to imitate me? How about everyone else in the courtroom, like the judge and the observers? Didn't they realize he was an imposter? Everyone had these big question marks on their faces, but it seemed that no one wanted to say anything, sir. So... This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Mr. Wright, do you think it's possible to get a retrial? Probably. The court ruled in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you think we'll win next time, sir? My life has been a full course meal of bad luck, complete with defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I even landed a phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. But... But... I will survive because Maggie Bird always lives to fight another day. And one day I'll find it. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find that one single moment of good luck. Ah, uh, Zin Ehop is really going to pay for this. What are you staring at? What, what are you staring at me like that for? But Maya's right. Whoever it is that thought it was a good idea to, good idea to use my name and get an innocent girl convicted of murder had better watch out. We'll find him. Don't you worry. We'll get Zin Ehop for you. Thank you. Oh, I'll tell you where Trey Beon is then. Trey- oh, right. The restaurant where the murder took place. Yes, sir. When you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure. All right, Nick. Let's go check out this restaurant and its food. Okay, now we can go to Trey Beon. January 6th, Trey Beon. I like the music here. <laughs> Wow, look at this place. Look, more like smell. What is it with the suffocating scent of flowers in here? Then again, girls like that kind of thing, right? Actually, I'm not all that into it. No one's coming to see us. Maybe there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. This is a restaurant and it's open for business. Hello? Anyone here? I don't believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect, let's get intrusive. If there's no one here, we can take anything we want. Yeah, I suppose we can. This must be the table where the murder occurred. I guess so, with all this police tape around it. And that stain must be from the poisoned coffee. Don't go licking the tablecloth, okay, Maya? Why would I lick it? I'm not a cat, you know. Then why can't I picture you doing just that? <laughs> it's a rack full of fashion magazines, and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? Huh, Maya? Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my acolyte clothes, aren't I? It'd be fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Hmm? There's something stuffed in behind the rack. Looks like a sports paper to me. Hey, and look at this. Someone scribbled a little doodle on one of the pages. MC Bomber. And one, two, three, four, five zeros. A uh, hundred thousand dollars, maybe? I wonder what MC Bomber is supposed to be. This paper. It's from December 3rd. This paper's from the day of the poisoning. What? Sports paper added to the court record. A paper from the day of the murder. This has got to be a clue. I should see if I can find out some more about this paper. Let's go ask Maggie about it, because it has MC written on it. That might be relevant. Oh, a sports paper. Let's see, let's see. Did, did Guts and Braun manage to defend his heavyweight title? 
Sorry, Maggie, that paper is actually a month old. It's from the day of the murder. And Gutson got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. Oh, no. I found this paper in the magazine rack at Trey Beyond. Really? That's strange. Trey Beyond doesn't get newspapers. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. Then maybe one of the customers left it behind? Anyway, what I want you to take a look at is this scribble here. Aha! That's it, sir! MC Bomber! That was the name that was written on the CD! <gasps> Just as I thought. I guess it wasn't MC Screwdriver after all, huh? So, that $100,000 must be a down payment for a record deal, right? If someone gave me $100,000, I'd sing for sure! The Master of q or the Spirit Song, or even Maya's theme! <laughs> um, okay, Maya. So, if the sample CD was on the victim's table, that means this newspaper may have belonged to the victim. You're right. So the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think we better step up the investigation, don't you, Nick? Just gonna head back to Trey Beyond. January 6th, Trey Beyond. Oh la la. Okay, I, I should be using a French accent, but I don't really have one. Bonjour. Welcome to La Trey Beyond. Oh, hello? What happened to Maya? She's frozen stiff. Bienvenue. Welcome to my petite restaurant. Restaurante? I don't know. I, I, I don't know French. Huh? B, B Avenue? Oh, non, my petite chulip. Huh? Me? Look at this face. Like a kitten rejected by its own mother. You are fatigued, non? Alas, you need this. An aromatic bath or a melange of ne La Neroli and La Rose. My personal recommendation. You think I need... what? Wee oui, wee, oui. just add a couple of drops of this mixture to the bath water and voila! It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for Le Monsieur? Who? Me? Look at that face. Like the puppy rejected by life itself. You are fatigued, non? For you, Monsieur, I recommend this. Oil of bergamot. Maybe an int of... Oui, oui. I will add the peppermint and the clary sage for a fragrance exceptionnel. Such an invigorating recipe will bring out your delicious beauty, Monsieur. M my beauty? Alors, if you'll be seated, I'll bring you the special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. We're lawyers. Mais bin, sir. I know this already, Monsieur. You are the Phoenix Wrights, non? Um, yes? You know me? Mace, oui oui. I never forget a man who flirts with me, especially in court. I guess he was cross-examined by a mysterious Zin Ehop. Looks like everyone to do with this case knows who I am already. I wonder what sort of impression Zin Ehop's been leaving on people, don't you? Is it Ehop or Ehop? I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself to you again. I am Jean Armstrong. Enchante! So yeah, this is the guy I was mentioning before. The effeminate Frenchman. Um, hopefully I'm doing an, a decent pronunciation of his French, because I don't know French at all, but I'm doing my best. So what does Trey Beyond mean? I know Trey, that means three, right? No, no, no. Trey Beyond is, is fr Francas? I don't know how to pronounce the word French in French. <laughs> in English, you would say, very good. Oh, very good. Oui, exactement. La atmosphere is très bien, and the cuisine is très bien. The food's so good, why aren't there any customers in here? My cuisine is not for all. Some people, they do not appreciate la hot cuisine. I thought everyone liked hot cuisine. Cuis cuisine? Cuis cuisine? I can't do words. <laughs> Since I have lost Maggie, I do not have enough hands. So, you're running this place on your own now? Oui, for the moment. No one has answered my advertisements. Oh, poor moi. Please don't eyeball me while you say that. 
I am le chef. I am le manager. I am also a trained aromatherapist. A roaming what? A practitioner d'aromatherapy. La art of soothing la soul with the delicate floral aromas. Delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but. So, could you tell me what you know about the incident? Bien. It makes me sad to remember it, yet I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So, it was the third of last month, just after one in the afternoon. A man who was in here for a coffee suddenly became ill. Because of the poison in his coffee? That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took his drink to him. I was in the kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came out to see what it was, he was already slumped in his chair. He was dead? Mon Dieu, oui, he was dead. Maggie had passed out also. And this man who died, was he alone? Oui, monsieur. All alone. I know that Maggie said there was someone else, but... I see. La police, they asked me many times. Are you sure there was no one else at the table, they asked? But I am not the only one. The old man said the same thing. Old man? What old man? Um, so who is this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder, there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? Nice, we. Oui. As usual, he came alone that day. At the time of the murder, he was here. He saw it too. But he, he said the same thing, that there was no one else at the victim's table. But Maggie swears there were two people. Mace, mademoiselle. The lawyer, he could not prove this, non? About the lawyer, that was me, I suppose. Mace Bin, sir. I had to pronounce that. Wow, he's the first person who said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. <sighs> now who's the one making stuff up? Uh, I think I need to present some stuff to you. Paper? We found this sports paper in the magazine rack here. One of my customers must have left it behind. Do you have any idea which customer it was? It's the only ideas I have, mademoiselle. I saved for my kitchen. Hmm. We to... No, we, we need to go talk to that old man, but I forget how you get access to doing that. Maggie was a policewoman once. Ne ne se pas? What? I don't know how that's pronounced. Yes, but she had to quit for um reasons beyond her control. Oui, oui. She was the suspect in the murder investigation, non? Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave to her the perfume for the happiness. Happiness perfume? Oui, blended from bergamot, like I have given to you before. But she's been arrested again, and found guilty this time. This is true, a natural aroma of unhappiness must have been very strong. Just admit it, your perfume doesn't work. I'm not surprised she was the prime suspect, after something like that took place before my, before my very eyes. Something like what? What's this guy talking about? Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? We've got to ask this guy for more info, stat. When Maggie took the coffee over to the victim, did anything happen? We, oui. I, I suppose you could say so. So what happened? None. It was, uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie says she didn't even know the guy. But if she's still been indicted for murder, the prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. We, oui, it is true. If there was anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. So please, tell us anything you know. <gasps> Psyche locks? No way, what are we gonna do, Nick? We'll just have to remove... What the? What's wrong? The Magatama, it's gone. Huh? I had it in my pocket, but it's vanished into thin air. What? But I could see the Psyche locks. 
Maybe that means the Magatama is nearby? Um, Mr. Armstrong, could I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting, was anyone else sitting there? That is a question you'll have to ask him yourselves. Huh? Him? The old man spends all of his time down to the park. La la park? Oh, a park. What park's that? Behind the restaurant. It is called Vitamin Square. Thank you. Javoy, Javoy and Pri, my dear. Let's go check out this Vitamin Square right now, Nick. Yeah, we gotta go to Vitamin Square. There we go. January 6th, Vitamin Square. So this is Vitamin Square. Yeah, I see where they get the name from now. The fruits scream vitamins at you. Hey Nick, that's the guy, right? Isn't that the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouchy looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. Maya, he's not throwing seeds for them, he's throwing seeds at them. Ugh, my grumpiness threat level has just been raised to red. I, I, I don't know what they were thinking with this design. <laughs> um, excuse me. Would you mind if I had a word with you? Yes. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? So you don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? He's really chucking those seeds at them. That's gotta hurt. Go on, eat this. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. Maggie, the waitress at Trey Beyon. Ah, it's a disgrace, I tell you. Not a disgrace. A disgrace? An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. Revealing? You mean her uniform? The youth of today. They don't have any shame. No shame, I tell you. Not one ounce. Whatever happened to the old Bushido values of Japan, like honor and modesty? What about me? I'm not wearing anything revealing. You. Your problem is you lack any sense of grace. Talk about hitting a girl where it hurts. Do you go to Trey Beyond a lot? Hm. That miserable excuse for a restaurant. That garbage they serve in there is not food. Where's the sushi, the tempura, the rice? Trey Beyond is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want real food, not those snooty snacks. And what about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to there. There. Yes, the waitresses. They're practically naked. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my it's not my restaurant. Car, it's a miserable excuse for a restaurant, that place. Miserable. He certainly knows the place. He must be a regular. But if he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just, if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Haha, -ha, take that. He must be hiding something, right? If he is, I should be able to see a psyche lock or two. Oh, wait. I don't exactly have the Magatama right now, huh? Remember, Nick, that Magatama is only on loan. You'd better find it or else. If Pearls ever gets wind of this, I'm gonna be in a world of pain. Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rope eating up something someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? Gah, that's none of your business. Sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back. Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. Job listings added to the court record. Hey, that's mine. We just, we just robbed him. Yeah, what we need to do next. <laughs> um, 
Maybe we can ask him about something. Let's see. We might be able to ask the old man some stuff. Um, excuse me, sir. Can I just ask you about this? Hmm, ha ha, hmm. Sir? Here you go, boy. How does some pigeon feed sound to you? This wasn't exactly what I was hoping to get out of it, this guy. Uh, yeah, same thing if I present other people. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't matter what I show him by looks of things. About my badge. Nope. Okay, so something else I'm supposed to do next, but I forget what. Um. Mademoiselle. Y yes. Oh, I remember. Are you looking for a job? What? N no, no. I was just. Let me see. Your style is un peu different, but you have a good face. Different? Felicitations, you have passed. I will hire you. Bien, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. N Nick, help! I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both? Okay, so... We are now alone because Maya is getting a job. <laughs> January 6th, detention center. Visitor's room. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. I guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. Uh, the officers? January 6th, the officers. Poor Maya. It looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taken a shine to her. I suppose I'll just have to let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Trey Beyond once things have cooled off. Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's going to find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. I need to start her investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all my other cases for now, pal. Don't she's really fired up about this. Oh yeah, one more thing. The retrial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10am tomorrow. And Goto's going to be the prosecutor. Oh. Him. Now, listen up, pal. If Maggie's found guilty again... Y yes? Um, I'll... I'll make sure you get locked up good for it. Got it? So the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force. You were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close, you know. Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? I was just her... It wasn't anything like... Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. Gumshoe sure is sweating up a storm over nothing. Ah, so that's it. A big old Gumshoe has a little old crush on Maggie. I... I don't like her or anything. I... I was... Ugh. Note to self. Gossip with Myra about this later. <laughs> Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? You gotta keep it a secret, got it? S sure. And would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal. Not me. You have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. So, I was wondering, could you fill me in on the victim? Glenn Elk, he was a computer programmer. I see, a programmer. He was just a regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his coffee on the day of the murder. Murder, pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef, but said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. A programmer, and first time customer at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding, what was her supposed motive? Sorry pal, I'm real busy, I haven't even got enough time to sift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could this motive have been? This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case, and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, doesn't sound very good for us, huh? 
Look, pal, I've got a mountain of papers on this case to look over for tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... she's... Okay, so she's a bit out there, and a bit off base sometimes. But she was a good cop. That's not exactly complimentary, you know. A cab. So what do you think really happened? And just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone, even the chef. And then there's the C that CD? CD? Oh yeah, she did mention something about a CD. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place upside down, there was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. A radio? He didn't have a CD player? You got it, your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it, the owner of Trey Beyond didn't mention that CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. We should be able to go back to Trey Beyond now. Nope, not yet. Okay, um, what else can we talk, talk about? Um, what's that? A sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Trey Beyond. It stated the same day as the murder. You may be onto something here. And take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey! What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. <sighs> it's no good, I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey pal, I'm gonna borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I wanna get a handwriting analysis done on this scribble. Handwriting, huh? It'd be good to know more about that in any case. Thanks pal, I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. Sports paper given to Detective Gumshoe. I think that's all I needed to do. Okay, you gotta go through the detention center to get to Trey Beyond for some reason. Nope, that didn't work. Something else we gotta do. Hmm. You asked me about some people. Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have. But I... I wasn't much good at consoling her. I'm, I'm not very good with words. Oh. Yeah, I guess I must have looked a bit down. Maggie was really supportive of me. It was great to have someone to talk to. Did he go for her or for himself? The chef of Trey Beyond, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Oh la la, your body is full of the toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know, the label says Juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's, you know, there's something about that lady. I mean, guy. Yeah, see? Huh? You can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. <laughs> I mean, I can't stop thinking he's involved with this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. Yeah, it's... it's very dated. So, what exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Trey Beyond? It's, um, kinda hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kinda... unimportant, gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You go to Trey Beyond and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you walk back to me, okay? Um... Don't suppose I got a choice in this, huh? Guess I better find out more about the chef and Trey Beyond than report back to Gumshoe. Okay, now let's go to Trey Beyond. There we go. January 6th, Trey Beyond. The scent of flowers sure is strong. It's almost making me dizzy. Oh, um, hello. 
Who was that just now? A customer? She had sort of a dark aura about her. Ah, welcome, B Avenue. Wow, what a cute voice. Oh, it's just you, Nick. M Maya? Well, how do I look? Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. Then who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh. Since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work the cash register. Of course, we need a custom before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Oh, Check out my give me a tip smile. Oh, I would give her a tip. <laughs> hey Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment. Or so he says. How much is it? It's the twin tea set, so it's $20 of course. The twin tea set? I believe... Oh, I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Kitchen, a lunch special, please. With all the extras, drink, side salad, dessert, and gift. I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. <laughs> Maya's really getting into this. So how much is this set lunch then? $20, huh? But with the drink, side salad, and dessert, it's $45? Hey, wait a sec, Maya. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Here you are, our deluxe fortify lunch set. Whoa. Dish inspired by lobster and abalone fricasse with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit! Um, thanks? Come on, Nick. Hurry up and try it already. Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Uh, well? Are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here, it's yours. Really? Uh, remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you better polish off that plate. I just remembered, I've got to clean the toilets. Hey, you can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. Trade beyond lunch special added to the court record. Costs $20 despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. How does that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Hey Nick, you want to take a peek at the kitchen? Kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Hmm, now what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all of the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen? Hmm, that sounds tasty. Hey, wait up, Maya. What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Weren't you going to show me around? Psst, there goes my plan to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. I better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. <laughs> to the kitchen, let's go. January 6th, Trey Beyond Kitchen. And here it is, the famous Trey Beyond Kitchen. It's my first time in here too, actually. There is a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we better search quickly. Chop chop! Okay, well we got some, we've got some bottles over here. Necklace here, what's here? Wrong spot. Boop! What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. It's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 98, 99, 100. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? It doesn't have a label, either. And it doesn't smell. So, what's that liquid inside, then, I wonder? Hey Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? 
small bottle head to the court record. Might notice this is here too. Now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey Nick, this container has oyster sauce? What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? Ack, look, right there on the counter. My Magatama, what's it doing there? What indeed? Magatama put it into pocket. Um, now this is one large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Clarice Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer Prize, but Pulitzer Prize material, is it? It looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool, read one out. And say it in your best French accent, with intensity, okay? Okay, um, here's one. Ahem, it's called Printemps. The two of them, like actors from a film, the coffee's still undrunk. Sweet nothing's over too soon, on that sad Sunday morning. It's a foolish cocktail, so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea and I know what I will do. I must lie to you. I must. Huh? That's it? Yep, that's a poem for you. I forget whether that's important at all. I think it might not be. January 6th, Vitamin Square. Hmm, the old guy's not here anymore. Drat, I still have some unanswered questions for him. A scooter, huh? Who'd leave it right in the middle of a park like this? The wheel guard and the light are busted. I guess it must have been in an accident. It's totally wrecked. <laughs> hey, what do you think you was doing with my bike? No, I was just... You has been messing with my new ride, is that what you has been doing? A new ride? Isn't that kind of an old model? You is gonna pay for this. It, it wasn't me, I was just passing by. Eh? Then who's the one that covered my saddle and crap, huh? You is gonna pay, you catch my drift? No, wait a sec, I'm not a pigeon, so I couldn't have done it. A wise guy, eh? I had to beat you so hard, it'll feel like you were smooching the express train. Uh-oh. You's better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers and then you's gonna pay. Um, actually, I'm a lawyer myself. What do you say? I'm Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. <laughs> Phoenix Wright? You saying you Phoenix Wright? Um, yeah, I am. So you a wise guy too, huh? Cause I'm Phoenix Wright. The one and only. What? Out of my way, I got a cruise. I know if I was doing his voice right. He, he's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? He wasn't anything like me. Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Cuh, pathetic. Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that. And you look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. Have you been here the whole time then? I was in that strawberry. I had some thinking to do. More like you had some cowering to do. Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? It's just that if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons. You want food? Ha ha, take that. Psyche lock. I knew it. This old guy has got something to hide, but what could it be? Trey Beyond Regular. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you regular at a restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? People only have one reason to go to restaurants. To eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. Oh, I haven't got I haven't got everything I need yet, actually. Just remembered. 
Yeah, we won't, we won't be able to finish this yet. Yeah, I'll just I'll just cancel it and come back later. I forgot we need an extra piece of evidence. Uh, I talked to you about everything already. I think I need to take that bottle back to not here, back to the um, criminal affairs department to have them analyze the contents. January 6th, police station, criminal affairs department. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about the newspaper you gave me. You must mean the sports paper with the memo, memo, memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn up anything? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glen Elg. No doubt about it. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at this moment. Sports paper refiled into the court record. MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find in the restaurant, okay pal? Since when did I start taking orders from Gumshoe? Although, I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. There is. It's this little bottle. You got one of those aroma bottles too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I didn't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you say? W sorry, wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? Smells like a skunk to me, pal. Mind me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. Small bottle given to Detective Gumshoe. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect Gene Armstrong? I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. That must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. I guess I'd better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. So what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had lunch at Trey Beyond, pal? Um, yes. So, how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean and he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. The real scoop on the guys is up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red. H half a million? Are we talking dollars? Yeah. Hey, if it was Sterling, he'd really be in trouble. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises. And I'd be willing to bet that chef, that chef's got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Jean's loan contract added to the court record. Sorry, Jean's loan, loan contract? I don't know how, how he's supposed to pronounce it. I think we have all we need at Vitamin Square now, so let's give this another go. I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent brat, how dare you accuse me, what proof have you got? I can tell that not you nor anyone else in the world would go to that place for its food. The proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the lunch menu. That's the twin tea set. The food at Trey Beyond is terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a jot of work since I was born, other than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. Taste another story, but the price, it's nothing to me. So, you're saying that you go there because you've got money to burn? Exactly. I have so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn. You're flat broke. Uh, I think we just have to show him the job listing. This is yours, right? My magazine. Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? 
I was... Ah, so what? So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to that restaurant for food. I just go for the Javachino. Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino? Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. Those had better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? N no, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not. But... But anyway, yes. That place has free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't be hanging around at home, so I go there. I'm sorry, sir, but there are no free papers to read at Trey Beyon. This is why we needed this paper to do this part of it. Take, Take a look at this. What is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trey Beyon. So, what of it? This was the only paper there, and it's dated more than one month ago. What? Do you see what I'm getting at here? That restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one that a customer happened to leave behind. Ah. Arg. Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I I'm not hiding anything. Oh, I'm gonna have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go so much to Trey Beyond is... What are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Trey Beyond. Ah. Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is the waitress. Ah. But I don't recognize that face. And you were probably telling the truth here because you weren't looking at the girl's face, but her out at her outfit. That's the truth, isn't it? He became a regular at that restaurant because of the waitress's uniform. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, uh, I, I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your... Enough, please. No more. Stop saying that word. Stop saying waitress. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Gross. <laughs> God, this is disgusting. <laughs> um, sir... Yes, it's true, I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. I even got one of those lousy cups of Javachino every time. For eight dollars. All because of the serving girl. Punish me. Lock me up. Well, that's not what I'm here for. You'll be the same. Another twenty years and you'll understand what it's like. You'll know how painful it is to be an old man like me. N no really, listen so. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy, so show some respect. Hmm, I'm Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident, which means I have to hear his testimony one way or another. Hmm. I don't believe this. I even broke his psyche locks and everything. I guess I'll have to try to get in when he's in a better mood. I think I need to ask Maya about Victor, like this. Oh, is that old man? Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I've got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? There's something I really want to ask that old man. Sure, okay, I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess? Yeah, this is pretty creepy. Um, sir? Hmm, you again? Hmm, well, well, I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me. It's okay, I think it's going pretty well. Ka. Huh? You're still just a little child. Run along and play on the slide, alright? Play on the slide? Yeah, thankfully he's not quite that gross. Ugh, oh, he was so close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. Hmm, <laughs> ha ha, ha hmm, 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 bip bip pigeon, hmm, ka. How can we crack this guy? Um, excuse me please, sir. Quiet, can't you see I'm feeding the p 
pitch. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing this. Mia? Well. If you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Certainly. I'm Victor. Victor Kudo. Even from beyond the grave. Wow. About the incident. You mean the man who died after drinking the Javachino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock, even for me. He was a strange looking boy. The girl took the Javachino over to him, you see. And was the customer alone? Definitely, he was the only person at the table. Then he took one sip of his Javachino and. and? And he said something like, Wag! Then he collapsed. Dead. Oh, how terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. Hee hee hee. He certainly seems to be telling the truth now. But it looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man either. Do you like the food at Trey Beyond? Well, of course. I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. One's in England, not France. Oh yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It, it's too much. I can't take it. I want France. <laughs> I can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. <sighs> You visit Trey Beyond a lot, don't you? Of course, I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right, the man's an ex-con. He... he's an ex-con? Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no, those eyes, I can't take this. Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things from his customers. From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things mainly. He's a pilferer, so you be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course, he was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my Java Chino. He really is a regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. A haiku? A Japanese poem. It'll explain all you need to know about that chef. Convicted before. Oh, gross. A wicked man or woman repeat offender. Signed, Victor Kuda. <laughs> God. Are you supposed to say signed, Victor Kuda? Because it's supposed to be five syllables and Victor Kudo is four. Convic convicted before. It's five. A wicked man. I'll repeat offender, Victor Kut. No? I don't think it fits. I don't think it's a haiku. <laughs> if he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy. He couldn't do enough for me. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. We got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. Okay, uh, let's head back to Trebeon. January 6th, Trebeon. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah, plus no one came to the restaurant. Oh la la, Mademoiselle Mayor. Non, how can you leave me like this? Uh, I'm sorry. That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a psyche look or three, or three, didn't he? I'm gonna have to break those. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Volunteers, of course. Take that. Take that. Maggie's motive. 
What is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Alors, alors. I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket? The man who died here and had a lottery ticket. For half a million dollars. H half a million? Oui. But after the incident, this ticket. It disappeared. The ticket disappeared? This was the motive that, prosecution, that the prosecution gave for Maggie. They said that she poisoned the man to get the half a million, do million dollar lottery ticket. Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Miss, a loss. You've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. And I want to know the reason why. Non, monsieur. You doubt me? But I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong. The half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Mr. Armstrong, I believe there is a very high probability that it was you. Ah. Wow, that is one piercing scream, even for a man like him. Mais pourquoi moi? Why, you have no evidence. I am not Masque the Mask. Masque the Masque. I'm not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. Uh, I believe... Yeah, it's this one. Victor's note. What is this? A poem? Oh, Monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please, read it. And put some feeling into it. Convicted before. A vicar's man, a woman, repeat offender. I'm sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong. But you have been arrested for stealing from your customs before, haven't you? Mon dieu! Le Monsieur, you are the liar! You deny it? Do not make la false accusation, s'il vous plaît. So, do you have any proof? I want to see the incontestest incontestable proof that I have ever stolen from one of my customers. Uh, yes. We, you took the Magatama from us. It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. Non! Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. I, I didn't really give it the full volume, did I? Oui, oui. I, I have a weakness for the little trinkets and the figurines. My hand just slips out. I cannot stop it. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? Oui, it is la truth. I am just a timid little girl inside, Monsieur. A timid little girl. Oh. I'd forgotten how they wrote this, my goodness. Besides, this time, it was not the small trinket, oui? It was $500,000. Mais non. Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? Oh, Monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you are in desperate need of a large amount of cash? Yeah. Take that! This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Ah. You have a loan to the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Oh. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Ah. Ah! Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man he was listening to is the radio with his earpiece. Hmm, Maggie said something about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. And the ticket? Oui. He had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I... I was so desperately in need of money, so I... Put the poison in his coffee? Non, 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 non! Oh, non, you naughty man! 
I simply opened myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, poor Koopa? He had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. None. This is not true. I did not take it. Let you get for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. May non, my Phil. It was not... That's enough. Huh? Ah! Mr. Gotto! What in the heck are you doing here? Ugh. This is without a doubt the worst coffee I have ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. He came in here for coffee? Does his craving for coffee know no bounds? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. I am the airhead, non? Just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. Hmm. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the wing ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I am just a pretty face. Without my looks, I have nothing. Okay, that doesn't absolve him of the motive for murder. Like, he took the wrong ticket, but he could have still tried to kill the guy to get the ticket, even if he took the wrong one. That doesn't, that doesn't absolve him of us being a suspect at all. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed, what did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? Mm. Voila, you two. Time to laugh at the pretty little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Victor's note thrown into the trash. Looks like we've got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. To be continued. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you weren't too weirded out by how they wrote Jean Armstrong's stuff, because yeah, yeah, that is way weirder than I remember. That is... I, I'm, I'm not sure if the character's supposed to be, like... <sighs> I don't, I don't know what they're going for, it's weird. Maybe, maybe they're like by gender or something? I don't know. I don't know. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Hopefully it wasn't too uncomfortable for everyone watching. <sighs> it was a little uncomfortable for me. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Next time we get on with the trial. Thank you for watching. Bye!